Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, May 18th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, right here, and ddarko2012, and my backup channel on YouTube is ddarko2013, so please subscribe if you can. The headlines and links for all these articles will be posted in YouTube's video description, so uh, please feel free to go check them out, and uh, kind of backs up what I'm saying here. All right, so I have a poll here, and it's good for still half a month, so if you haven't voted yet, uh, what are the chances of the stage alien invasion slash space threat during the 2012 London Olympics? Well, the majority are saying so far it could happen, but who knows when. So uh, you can follow GGN uh, by email there. Uh, I have a new language preference over here if you're from a different country and um, also a news archive so and if you'd like to help there's a donate button there i used to have it on video youtube's video description but i took it away because the link it needs to be uh refreshed or something like that uh, every two minutes so okay so i'm going to cover the middle east uh afghanistan and yemen so and some other places too that are really being underreported I've covered, I mean, I've been reporting on it, but you don't really see it in the mainstream media, which is especially Yemen. Uh, U.S. airstrikes kill five Afghan civilians in eastern province. It says here, United States has carried out overnight airstrikes in Afghanistan, killing five civilians, or collateral damage, basically, in eastern province of Wardak, and Press TV is reporting. So, but it goes on here, says that local Afghan villagers, however, rejected the statement, blaming the U.S. forces for killing harmless civilians with no links to any militant groups. Then we have this, oil extraction in North Afghanistan to begin in five months. Afghanistan Ministry of Mines has announced that oil extraction from the northern Amu uh, Dara Basin will begin during the next five months. Okay, so this is leading up to what? The NATO summit to define presence in Afghanistan beyond 2014, so the NATO summit. So they're going to define what they're going to do in Afghanistan beyond 2014. This is after Obama signed the strategic pact with Afghanistan. And this was on May 2nd, U.S. President Barack Obama signed the strategic partnership agreement with Afghanistan. According to local Tulu News, the agreement will grant stay for some U.S. troops after the 2014 uh, date when most of the foreign soldiers will supposedly withdraw and mercenaries and everybody else will remain, including, you know, these contractors over there because it's all, you know, it's all business. So, yeah, but... Uh, Goes on and says the upcoming NATO summit in Chicago will determine its long-term presence in Afghanistan between, beyond 2014. And it says here one of the major topics of the NATO summit is to establish a vision, establish a vision for our enduring presence, ours, which is the military-industrial complex in Afghanistan. Basically, how long are they going to occupy there and what are they going to take from that country and export it out? So it says here that the summit will feature a series of bilateral agreements. Trade agreements, maybe? Who knows? Obama order backing Yemen dictator threatens free speech, says critics. So it says here Obama is under fire after passing a so-called executive order threatening anyone, including American citizens, who interfere even indirectly with the transition to uh, power of the new U.S. government-backed dictator of Yemen. It says here, analysts express concern that the measure could be an attack on the First Amendment protection of free rights, uh, free speech rights, suggesting that journalists and activists who oppose the Yemeni regime uh, might find themselves targeted by the administration's newly uh, supercharged terror war. So uh, maybe that'll be me. I'm sure I'm already on some kind of list, but maybe I'll make the, maybe I'll finally make the cut, guys. I'll make the kill list, right? And then I'll get a personal drone. My own little personal drone that will be flying over my head. And I'll get into um, the drone in Chicago and show some of the footages and, and talk about the NATO uh, summit, the actual protesting in the next videos. So, U.S. finally confirms ground campaign in Yemen special forces in focus counterterrorism campaign. So, uh, I mentioned before about how these, quote, Al-Qaeda they're bombing are not actually Al-Qaeda. It's a certain sect of uh, locals, basically. And it says here, doing away with this with the pretense that U.S. troops in Yemen are exclusively there on a training mission, officials are confirming that about 20 U.S. Special Forces are on the ground and engaged in a focused counterterrorism campaign. So with drones pounding southern Yemen on a near daily basis, the, com uh, the confirmation sorry, shows that the troops are not just in Yemen but are actually directing the Yemeni military in their suddenly aggressive offensive against the Abayan province.
So it says here that this comes just days after the most recent denial by Leon Panetta, the defense uh, secretary, insisted there was no consideration of U.S. ground troops inside Yemen, along with President Obama, who ruled it out. So it's the first official acknowledgement of the mission. And this is kind of a backup article, another source from UPI. You can go check it out. But um, it kind of, it's a whitewash, of course. The new president in Yemen is reported to be more willing to work with the United States and his predecessor, who stepped down after months of protests. So, are American drones killing civilians in Yemen? It goes on and it says that the war on terror has a new front. The United States is expanding military operations in Yemen, where, quote, Al Qaeda has a foothold in the south. And just briefly, it goes in there and talks about how the CIA and um, uh, these groups or entities, they search for patterns of suspicious uh, behavior. When these patterns are observed, drones strikes uh, strike by firing explosives to the area. So I, I, I think we already knew that, that they go and kill people, but we have to be uh, told that this is what they're actually doing. These signature strikes if you're on the kill list, are aimed at anonymous suspected militants. Anonymous, it says here, suspected militants, so, who exhibit suspicious behavior. And we have suspected, you, <laughs> suspicious, suspected U.S. drone uh, kills three Yemen milit uh, militants, so, American drones killing civilians in Yemen. Well, yes, they are. It's probably not suspected either. It is. It's happening. People died there. So, a suspected U.S. drone attack on a convoy of Islamist militants in eastern Yemen overnight, killing three people, local security officials said on Thursday. South Yemen sees succession as route to defeating al-Qaeda, or al-Qaeda, the CIA's, the elite's own little private terrorist network that's operating um, now out of Syria. And we're there to, we're here to fight, we're everywhere, right, to fight al-Qaeda, but we're funding them. <laughs> So, exi exiled former ruler says malicious fighting against uh, Ansar al-Sharia in uh, Abiyan. It says here, in much of the world, a successful successionist movement rests almost entirely on securing Western uh, Red Reed U.S. acquiescence. So, it says here, this is a particularly true of Yemen, uh, where U.S. drones loom overhead, and the U.S. is loudly and aggressively backing uh, the new regime. To that end, the long-standing secessionist movement in southern Yemen aims to create a state in the territory uh, that was once a Soviet-backed uh, People's De Democratic Republic of Yemen is, is couching its ambitions as a sure way to defeat al-Qaeda. So it goes on there and it basically says that their leader said that uh, South Yemen could make quick work of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula by a more centralized nature. So but basically it goes on here and it says that um, the term al-Qaeda is used in statements by uh, the Yemeni government in the West and the press and it makes no sense to do so. It says here that it says pro-secessionist militias have been at the forefront of fighting. And lastly, whether selling South Yemen as a tool for the United States war on terror will work is unclear, but it follows in the trend of similar efforts at Balochistan's independence from Pakistan, which also presented it as a way to secure supplies into occupied Afghanistan and install a more pro-U.S. Uh, regime in Quetta. We have U.S. shadow war in Horn of Africa revealed by blogger. So I don't think it was just revealed by one lonely blogger. It's been covered by all kinds of alternative news uh, sources. But in a series of blog posts over the last two weeks since May 11th, uh, this individual has described in unprecedented detail the powerful aerial force helping to wage Washington's hush us campaign of airstrikes, naval bombardments, commando raids, special forces basically along the western edge of the Indian Ocean, including terror hotspots, terror hotspots. Here you go in Yemen and Somalia. So says here it's outlined the deployment of eight um, fighter jets from the home base in Idaho into the international air and naval outposts at Camp Lemonier and um, north of Somalia. So 10 years ago, the Air Force openly acknowledged the initial F-15 rotation in uh, Djibouti. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And um, in 2011, after a Air Force Reaper drone crashed, Pentagon was forced to admit it was building a drone base on the island nation. It says here, um, it also uncovered additional Reaper bases in Yemen and Ethiopia. Armed drones operated by the CIA and military have killed scores of, quote, militants. Well, they didn't quote it, but it says here, that's what I'm saying. I, they're going to call them militants in Somalia and Yemen under steadily loosening 
uh, rules of engagement. Then we have AFRICOM's first regional brigade will deploy and begin operations. And this says right here that a United States based unit has been selected as the Army's first regionally aligned brigade and by next year its soldiers could begin conducting operations in Africa. It's the first step in an effort to develop uh, expert units to rotate to the region. It says here U.S. Africa Commander AFRICOM will be the first to test a new rotational model intended to give commanders a more reliable supply of soldiers available for short training focused missions. Okay so just like South Yemen and that they're trying to build these bases to uh, uh, for the Asia Pacific region. It says the region regionally aligned forces con concept will be especially in, important in the Asia Pacific region as we move forward. So yeah, it says here that uh, they will be aligned with the Southern Central Pacific commands eventually. And then the South Sudan, a former United States official, calls for arming the army. The U.S. should move to provide an anti-aircraft defense system to South Sudan in order to discourage. Uh, them from launching aerial attacks and persuade it into returning to negotiations, former Special Envoy to Sudan said. Turkey's attack on civilians tied to U.S. military drone after winding along a narrow mountain road, a caravan of 38 men and mules paused on a Turkish-Iraqi border, and they heard the propellers overhead. Turkish military aircraft dropped bombs that killed about uh, four of the men, or all but four of the men, sorry. The drone strike in late December was meant to knock out Kurdish uh, separatist fighters instead of killed uh, civilians so but it went on there and it said that uh, it was actually a United States predator drone and we have US Kurdish threat aimed at Turkey not Syria Kurdish groups have thus far stayed out of NATO's destabilization of Syria and US threats to arm and unleash Kurdish groups aimed uh, at coaxing Turkey to act to give you some background, the Kurds occupying territory straddling the Iranian, Iraqi, Syrian, and Turkish borders have for nearly as long been fighting against Turkish forces with U.S.-occupied Iraq hosting several Turkish invasions aimed at crushing alleged Kurdish strongholds. It says that unlike Syria, the international community uh, has been mute over Turkey's military campaigns against Kurds both within and beyond its borders. If the Kurds are armed by the United States, they will head to Ankara and not Damascus and Syria, thus Washington's latest threat was made towards Turkey and not Syria. And most of you are probably already aware of this, but I'll just include it. Syrian rebels get influx of arms with Gulf neighbors, money, U.S. coordination. They're saying with the effort uh, paid for by Persian Gulf nations, as Saudi Arabia and all them, and coordinated in part by the United States, according to activists in U.S. and foreign officials. Lebanese army seizes weapons, explosives near the Syria Syria border, a consignment of weapons and explosives near the border, apparently destined for armed gangs fighting against the Damascus government. Seize the ceasefire, Syrian rebels bask in the new guns that they just received, purchased with the money given to them by the Gulf monarchies and the U.S. It says here, Syria's sectarian splits creep into Lebanon. It says here that a small but increasingly vocal number of Lebanon's Sunni Muslims, remember I covered this, are backing Islamist leaders calling for the regime change in neighboring Syria. Why is the terrorist Kosovo Liberation Army, who was declared terrorist, I believe, before, uh, training the Syrian opposition? So you can go in there and check out check out this uh, video. Link will be posted. But yeah, it was uh, regarded by the U.S. as a terrorist group until 1998. Next up, Russia warns against training Syria rebels in Kosovo, so this is kind of a get, becoming a big deal. Al-Qaeda responsible for recent attacks in Syria, says the UN chief, but he didn't get the memo because uh, Al-Qaeda is actually walking along with UN uh, missionaries or peacekeepers. I mean, if you're going to say Al-Qaeda is responsible for the attacks in Syria and then have pictures posed with them, you know, you, you're going to have some conflicting reports there, Ban. But maybe it's what they want. Well, we know that's what they want, to create instability, right? That's what the whole Kofi Annan plan was to do. It was to just stall so that they can arm these people like they just did and have them uh, start going over the border into Turkey and whatnot so they can declare, what, R2P, rights to protect, and start drone bombing. The, the real government, the real decision makers in the U.S., the RAND Corporation, sides with Mossad, another one who makes uh, decisions for the U.S., uh, about what? Uh, warning against Israeli-American strikes on on Iran and then U.S. ambassador to Israel plan to attack on Iran is ready. United States Israel Enhanced Security Cooperation Act of 2012 has been passed. And a separate bill that calls for military strike if Iran obtains nuclear capability was overwhelmingly passed. And there's protests as the UK Queen hosts Bahraini tyrant and Gulf monarchs.
This is GGN. Thank you.